everybody at First Baptist. So glad that uh, all of y'all could join us on this uh, Labor Day weekend. And uh, we're going to sing Worthy of Worship at this time. So if y'all would all like to um, rise up, uh, we'll go ahead and start singing. Bow with me in prayer, please. What a holy and sacred moment, O oh God, to be able to come with people of faith who have been redeemed in the blood of Christ, to join hearts and minds together as we worship you and praise your name. We know as we gather in this place in Jesus' name, your Spirit is already here doing His work. So this morning we pray, O oh Spirit of God, that you would so move upon each of us that our hearts will be strangely touched and we'll see Jesus. We'll see Him as the authority of life and long more than anything else to be His servants. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here. And to any guests we have, we thank you for coming to be with us this morning. It's just a different kind of setting today, but we're all so grateful that we can be together. Open your heart now to the Lord as wonderful music is available and we'll look at God's Word and, and worship Him together. Well, if y'all want to go ahead and uh, start standing up, we're going to go ahead and sing the creed, this I believe, uh, to our awesome God.
us in Romans 10, verse 8, The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the Scripture says, anyone who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Would you pray with me? Indeed, Father, that is why we are here today. To, we come to worship You and with our mouths and with our hearts confessing that You are Lord. And God, Father, we do believe that You are God our Father, that You are the Christ, the Son, and You are the Holy Spirit. And today we believe and we worship in that name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest spring, but holy. Thank you, Blakely, for that wonderful job. We bow with your prayer. The house of prayer for all the nations, O oh God, is what you have said this place is. Across the many years, your folks have gathered in this room to pray, to seek your face, to be the people of God in this town. So this morning we've come again on this important Lord's Day to open our hearts to you, to the Holy Spirit, that He will impress upon us how we're to live to honor Jesus. That's why we're here. So Father, thank you for the privilege of coming in the blood of Jesus to be cleansed of all our sins so we can be your servants. Thank you for your redeeming grace and mercy in Jesus. You've been so kind and gracious to us in multiple ways. You have promised always to go with us, for your grace always to be sufficient. And so we thank you that that's the case. On this Labor Day weekend, we pray especially for many in our church family who are traveling. May their time away with families be meaningful and restful. May it be a time to bind their families closer together. So watch over them, Father, and keep them safe. We thank you so much for the way you touch us in the crises of life. There have been so many crises in recent months. But not a single 
crisis that's occurred has been too great for you to take care of. So this morning we simply thank you for the way you care for us, for the way you provide all of our needs. Many in our church family in recent days have gotten some serious news about medical issues. Those issues are challenging and overwhelming at times. So this morning we lift up by name those individuals we know and pray that each of them and their caregivers will sense your touch of love and kindness and they'll know the strength that comes from your spirit. We thank you. We pray now in the quietness of this moment that each of us will sense you're here and you want to help us become the people of God to honor you wherever we live. Thank you for our time together here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, y'all can sound wonderful so far, so I'm going to ask that y'all stand up one more time while we sing uh, all four verses of There is a Fountain.
chapter 15 1st Corinthians chapter 15 and hear the word of God found in verse 58 1st Corinthians 15 verse 58 therefore my dear brothers and sisters stand firm let nothing move you 
Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Paul believed that our relationship with Jesus should impact all of life. Our relationship with Jesus ought to affect our work, whatever that might be. How should our relationship with Jesus affect our work? Our relationship with Jesus ought to cause us to be steadfast and dependable. Now, unfortunately, it is not easy to find folks like that. The truth is, there are so many people who have no intention of doing what they say they're going to do. They're, no, they're not going to be steadfast or dependable at all. But you know, this is nothing new. I remember when I was just a teenage boy working in the summertime with my dad, who was a house painter in Andalusia. Oftentimes, we would go into a new facility to paint. The different subcontractors prior to our going had said they would have given areas ready. I could not tell you how many times we went and that work had completed. They had no intention of doing what they said they would do when they said they would do it. It's hard to find people who would do that. Continually I hear employers say, it is just really hard to find good help. That's unfortunate. Now here's a, a simple truth that each of us could benefit from. Whatever the work you do, it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever your work is, be sure that you're steadfast and dependable in that work. This is a very important truth. Now, you may not be a fan of golf, but probably you know the name Tiger Woods, even if you're not a golfer. Tiger Woods, even as a teenager, was known for his mental toughness. Here's how that happened. His father, Earl Woods, would often say that his son Tiger was rather full of himself. On one occasion, when Tiger was 16 years of age, he was playing in a, a junior golf tournament in Miami. Now, because he was rather full of himself, if things weren't going exactly as he wanted them, he would often pout and just quit and give up. He did that in that tournament. Now, his dad, Earl Woods, was a former Green Beret. He was a tough man. After Tiger basically quit that weekend, his father went to him and said, Who do you think you are? Golf doesn't owe you anything. Don't you ever quit again. Tiger didn't say anything. But his dad said, as best he knew, he never quit again. What a wonderful way for us to live. As followers of Jesus Christ, you and I ought to be the most dependable and steadfast workers around us. We ought to demonstrate to people what it means to be faithful and dependable. If we think about Jesus and what He did for us, and Paul describes that in prior verses, we remember that Jesus paid a huge price for our redemption. Jesus was so committed to His task, He never wavered. He was steadfast and dependable to fulfill His tasks. If Jesus did that for us, surely this morning, as followers of Him, of His on this Labor Day weekend, we want to recommit that we will be faithful, we'll be steadfast, and we'll be dependable because we're followers of Jesus. Our relationship with Jesus ought to also cause us to give ourselves fully and energetically to whatever our work may be. Whatever your work may be, doesn't matter what it is. Here's a great way to live. Give yourself fully and enthusiastically and energetically to whatever that task may be. Doesn't matter what it is. Have you ever had this happen to you? You went into a department store maybe to purchase something or into a fast food place here in town to get something. 
you found your per, per, uh, purchase in the department store or you, you placed your order at the fast food place and you went to the cash register, the person at the cash register paid. The person was about like this. You paid them the money, they didn't say a word. Thank you. No. Thank you. I just want to check it. Being, be enthusiastic and energetic about your work. Whatever it may be, show you care. Show some energy, show some excitement about it. Whatever it is you do, do it all. As disciples of, of Jesus, surely we want to be the most devoted workers anywhere we can be. It's important for us to show that we care. It's important for us to be excited about our work. It's important for us to do that extra that nobody expects us to do. It's important how we work. It doesn't matter your job, it doesn't matter your task. But give yourself fully to it. You're following Jesus. Give it to the show. I read this week about an interesting experience that happened. The president of this large company brought his executive folks together. He wanted to talk to them about the future of the company. When he walked into the meeting room, he noticed there was a trash on the floor. He asked the question, why, why is this trash on the floor? Why didn't somebody pick it up? All kinds of excuses off. Then he did this. He said, give me just a minute. I want to teach you something that obviously you didn't learn in school. So he went and got a couple of items and he brought them back. The first item he said, this is a broom. With a broom, you sweep trash up. The second item was a dust pan. He said, this is a dust pan. You sweep the trash onto the dustpan and you put it into a receptacle. So he said, I'm going to show you how that works so you'll learn. So he takes the broom, he sweeps the trash, puts it into the dustpan, takes it out in the hallway, and puts it in the receptacle. Then he comes back in for a very short meeting and he says this to them The future of this company depends on people who will do more that is expected of them. Isn't that the way you and I as believers in Jesus should work? We want to give ourselves fully and energetically to whatever our task may be, doing always a little more than is expected of us. What a witness in the marketplace for that kind of worker. Again, our relationship with Jesus should cause us to know that whatever our task, we offer that task unto the Lord, knowing that we're doing that work for the Lord. Let me ask you a basic question. You may be a student in school, you may be a worker in the marketplace, you may be an employer, you may be retired, it doesn't matter what your work may be. It's a teacher, whatever. What is your motivation each day? Do you do your work for money? That is a primary motivation for a lot of folks. There's a better way. Why not take whatever your work may be? Student in school? Teacher? Coach? Whatever it may be. Offer your work unto the Lord. Pray that the work you do would honor Jesus in every way. It would be amazing the impact it would have where you work if you offered your work as unto the Lord that it might bring glory to His name. That is such an important thing for us to do. Here's a simple truth that will guide us in every setting. Offer your work unto the Lord knowing that it will have a positive impact for the future. In the middle of the 17th century, a young man came from England to America. He was very bright. Those who knew him thought he had a tremendous future. But in less than a year, he died in America. 
He had a library of 200 books. He left those 200 books and 700 pounds of English money to a new school. Today, from the middle of the 17th century to today, that school has over a thousand professors, over 10,000 students, and is still touching lives around the world. When John Harvard died on American soil, those who watched him with all of his promise thought his life had been lived in vain. But you see, he offered his work as unto the Lord. And that man's influence still lingers around the world. Whatever your work may be, offer it unto the Lord. For here's the best way to live on this earth. Whatever you do, allow it to be offered to the Lord that through your work, His name would be honored, people would see Jesus, and how you do your work. For three summers, while I was in college, I worked at a Boy Scout camp in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. The first summer, I taught canoeing and rowing at that little camp. The second two summers, I became the waterfront director and taught swimming and life saving. I was 19, maybe 20 by then. All these rambunctious little boys would come down to the school dock we had down there in this river where we had swimming life saving from the horse cows there walk out of that. It was not an easy task. Now also down there, in a place about like this, we had a little green tent. We kept supplies in there like alcohol and droppers to put alcohol drops in their ears when they came out of that water because it was not a regular swimming pool, it was a river. So we had to make sure their ears didn't get infected, we did all that. But here's what I often had to do. I knew that there, was, there would be a bunch of wide open little boys coming down just to us, and I was going to teach them swimming lesson or maybe an offset lesson. Here's what I would often do. It was not easy. I would set over this little tent before they came. I would put my head inside that tent, bow my head, and I would pray something like this Lord, I represent you. Help me. So to show kindness to these boys that they'll see Jesus. I meant that with all of my heart. That was not easy. But offering that work unto the Lord made a difference in the lives of those boys over the summers. This morning, whatever your work, know that if you offer it to the Lord, it's not in vain. Will you pray with me? Lord, each of us has different jobs. But help each of us to understand as followers of Jesus that we all have the same work. Our work is to take whatever job we have, do the very best we can with it to be steadfast and sound, to show energy and enthusiasm, and above all, to know that whatever that job may be, we're going to offer it to Jesus. And pray that through the way we do that job, those around us will see Jesus. They'll know that following Him makes a difference in how we live. So help us, Lord, to be the kind of disciples in the marketplace that would exalt the name of Jesus. Show people the difference it makes when we walk with Him. In Your holy name, Amen.